Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering Pedro of Brazil, going over their uniques, a strategy I use for playing as them, and giving Brazil a final ranking at the end of the video. If you find this useful, please consider giving this video a like. It helps boost me out on the YouTube search results and can significantly help out my channel by just clicking one time. And make sure you stick around to the end to get my final ranking on what I think Brazil is in the current metagame. Brazil's unique ability is Amazon. Rainforest tiles provide plus one adjacency bonuses to commercial hubs, holy sites, campuses, and theater square districts. Rainforests also apply plus one appeal instead of the negative. This is kind of the bread and butter of playing as Brazil. Their other bonuses, in my opinion, don't really come into play until much later. This ability is good, but it's not great. Rainforest is probably the least consistent terrain type to boost districts off of. Rainforest tends to be spotty, and you tend to want to cut down Rainforest for other things. Most of the time, I find myself getting plus two to three for holy sites here early on, and plus two to three for a campus or theater square or two before I run out of use for this ability. Is this bad? No, but it doesn't scale well. It's just a couple of static bonuses to a couple of cities' districts, and even then, not all of the districts in the city. I think Vietnam does Rainforest Adjacency so much better. When you place a district as Vietnam, the Rainforest doesn't go away, but when you place a district as Brazil, the Rainforest is gone. I think a big, huge buff to Brazil would be to keep the Rainforest underneath the tile as you play through. Now this all changes if you can get Sacred Path. At that point, your Rainforests are going to give your Holy Sites plus 2 instead of plus 1, and you're going to get some crazy work ethic yields. So that plus 3 Holy Site becomes a plus 6 Holy Site, and when if you get the double Holy Site adjacency, it becomes a 12 Holy Site. However, the two most highly sought after pantheons by the AI are Religious Settlements for the Settler and Sacred Paths for some weird reason. So unless you can guarantee that you get the first two pantheons, you're probably not going to get this. Brazil has no access to early faith to help you get that pantheon except for lucky city-state spawns or relics from goody huts. I played six 100 turn games to get this guy done, and never once did I get sacred paths, so don't rely on getting it. And that makes this bonus pretty mid. Pedro's ability is magnanimous. Whenever you get or buy a great person, you get 20% of their cost back, making you closer than most people to the next great person. And this is a pretty win more bonus overall. It doesn't come into play until late in the game. The earliest great person you're going to get probably is a profit in most games, and it does nothing at all to help with profit since you only get one. In order to make good use of this, you need to be generating a lot of points towards one or two types of great people, which means you're going to need multiple districts of that type. <clears throat> you can't get everything here. Either you're going to be getting scientists and engineers, or great writers, artists, and musicians and engineers. And you'll need quite a few cities to get this rolling. You need faith or gold to make the best use out of this. I often find that it doesn't truly come into play until the industrial era, and by that point I'm usually taking all the great people from a certain pool anyway. The unique district for Brazil is special. You're the only civ in the game that gets two unique districts, though they are almost functionally the same. The Street Carnival and Copacabana replace the Entertainment District. They both are half cost and both give at one extra amenity. The only thing is that if you have lots of rainforest in your city, you want the Street Carnival to get the zoo. And if you have a lot of coast in your city, you want the Copacabana to get the, the <coughs> coastal reef, the aquarium. That's what it is. It's not so great. Uh, there's not much special happening here. However, they have a unique project that gives you an extra amenity while working it, so that's plus three instead of plus two. And you get great people points for finishing it, just not scientists or great generals. So this synergizes with Pedro's ability, but I tend to never ever work projects unless it's super late in the game and I don't want to deal with my city spam anymore. It's just there. It's, it's almost always something more important to be producing instead of this project. It's better to just get more faith. With more faith you can just buy those great people instead of producing them. Brazil's final bonus is the unique battleship the Minas Gerais. You get it earlier from the culture tree instead of the science tree. You get it at nationalism instead of steel and you're usually going culture as Brazil. And it has a whopping plus 10 combat strength over a regular battleship. And this thing is cool. It just sucks that naval units suck and you don't get much use out of this. 
if you're playing on a water heavy map build a lot of them and sometimes when i play on fractal i get a pretty water heavy map take some cities to get even more great people or finish off a domination win otherwise build one or two for defensive purposes and the error score and that's really it when playing as pedro i tend to choose a path pretty early do i have lots of rainforest nearby do I have the slimmest chance of getting the first or second pantheon? Then I'm gonna rush a religion, getting preserves, and go for a culture game. If I don't have large swaths of rainforest and I have small patches of rainforest, I'm gonna build an early campus just to get whatever bonus I can get, ignore religion, and go for science. The big thing is that you need to be ready to accept that a majority of your cities will not be getting the bonus from your ability. Don't focus on the jungle, just use the jungle as a bonus, spread out, and play a vanilla game. The thing with Pedro is you have to play greedy. You have to use this small bonus to slingshot yourself over the AI. And that does lead to a lot of games where you're gonna die early. You can't afford to build a ton of military early. You have to get cities and districts to utilize your bonus. Rainforest starts tend to be production poor and you can't improve your tiles until you get bronze working. And even then, you don't wanna be chopping that rainforest to improve those tiles anyway. A tech Bronze working is a tech that's pretty noticeably away from where you're going for science or culture wins. So play greedy, try to get two early cities, and get a high yield district down, buy your first district building, and hope you can get those early great people and use those early great people to slingshot yourself forward, move nicely into your entertainment districts, and get even more great people, and then the world is your oyster. If you don't do that, you're playing a sieve with no bonus at all, and you will get outclassed by the AI. I will have to say though that Work Ethic, Sacred Path, and Void Singers is a fun culture game. Hermetics and Huge Campus Districts are also a fun science game. Brazil is one of the few civs that I think can run the Hermetics well, since your ley lines are going to be sick with all the great people that you're going to be generating. But I find that most great people in the game really aren't as good as they should be. There's a lot of great people that I get where I'm just sort of like, why, why do I need this? There's like five core great people that you need in the game. And often, if you can't get those, Brazil feels pretty bad. Brazil's best path to victory is culture. You're going to get high adjacency theater squares getting you to important civics. You're going to get great writers, artists, and musicians pretty easily. You'll get a pill and tourism from Rainforest. So if you don't get wiped out, you can get a good culture game going early. But you'll only have that culture bonus in a small section of your empire, and the rest of it will be a vanilla culture game, which isn't bad. It's just other people do culture better, and this is just not that flavorful. So I'm giving him a 7 out of 10 for this one. Science would come next. Again, good adjacencies here. You can get a scientist spam, an engineer spam, if you get enough campuses and industrial zones down. And you'll get there. You're just not going to get there as quickly as other civs. So 6 out of 10. Religion and domination would be third. They stem from the same thing. You get a good amount of faith from your rainforest cities, and this will lead to either missionary spam or grandmaster's chapel army spam, and that can be fun too, just not as fun as Byzantium, right? So 5 out of 10. And diplomacy would be the weakest path overall. You do get bonus gold, you will get engineers, and the Minas Gerais is a good unit for winning military emergencies, but again, I just dislike diplomacy victories, so 4 out of 10. Overall, Brazil is just a sieve that I don't want to play. I find them pretty boring. Their bonuses are not noticeable past the earliest part of the game, and they don't force me to play in a way that's different from anyone else. I feel like in vanilla, again, they were pretty good, just like the Congo, but because great people were good at that time, and empires were smaller, and it was harder to get yields, and harder to get great people, but they've been power crept by civs like Vietnam, and other civs that get scalable yields throughout the game. I do love that music, though. To me, Pedro is a C-tier civ. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.